It is Thursday, October the 3rd, 2024. And as part of the All the Barriers Call for Help to Biological Mothers, I have a question about why parents do not see homeschooling their children as a viable option. And before you dismiss this question, I seriously want you to consider and write down all the reasons why you believe you cannot homeschool your children. This is a critical question because you must release the current public education system. And I will link all of the videos that I have done to help you to understand this point and why I have been making it. It is perfectly okay that in a healthy community, that there be a community schooling system, meaning that parents who have strengths in teaching certain subjects can rotate teaching each other's kids in those areas, one, to take the burden off of each individual household, but two, to also to give kids lots of exposure to different ways of viewing things and seeing things. And it, it's an ongoing process. But in order for you to fully comprehend what I'm saying and to see how it can be applied, because this is the old and traditional way, we haven't always had public school systems in the way they're structured now, is that you have to seriously and honestly allow yourself to explore why you believe homeschooling is just not an option for your family. And then ask yourselves about those barriers and what are the underlying causes of those barriers? Because are they really things that you want to continue to hold on to? I came across this post this morning. Can I share with you my responses to some of the comments on this thread? You should be able to discern the nature of the original comment based on my response, which I won't share for the complete privacy of the commenters. In this particular comment, my response is, I don't disagree with you, but kids are interested in what they have been exposed to. Innocence has embedded in it a level of naivety that comes with being unaware. People are continuously discovering things they were not aware of well into their senior years. Exposure to content that is too overwhelming based upon any person's capacity to fully integrate the new information with a level of personal understanding and applicability is unfair to the person, especially children. Children ride in cars all the time. It doesn't mean they should be allowed to drive them. We might provide a toy that simulates driving to help with their curiosity and to explain how a car works, but often that is enough at that stage of development. They may ask more questions about driving when they are nearing an age when they have been taught would be appropriate, but they would have a plethora of other interests that have nothing to do with driving until that time. Sometimes too much focus is placed on what should be allowed to be exposed when there are far more interesting and productive things to be introduced to. Parenthetically, it is what is being exposed and available publicly that needs to be the focus here because it is a huge part of the problem. Permission is a parenting issue. People who are not raising children of their own are not equipped to advise people who are with advice on how to do that. This statement may offend some people, but it is the truth. We all have gifts and experiences to share that can assist the collective with teaching and learning as a whole at whatever stage of lifespan development we are in. We can respect one another's opinions around critical issues like this accordingly. To this comment, I respond, I agree with you 100%. Anytime I see messages that imply or blatantly state let kids do whatever they want, and then in this case, to have it be the responsibility of the parents to clean up any damage after the fact, red flags go up everywhere. The way this is managed at the public level is access. Before completely banning classic books, it makes sense that the community review and agree to a system of access that prevents children from being exposed to adult-themed materials before it is age-appropriate. Content ratings are not new, but have been lost in a society suffering the ongoing erosion of common sense, ethics, and morality. 
It's always curious what things the chaos creators believe parents take too much control over and then what parents should be blamed or shamed for as a behavioral outcome when proper restrictions cannot be effectively enforced because they are undermined by these same individuals. As a side note, I emphasize classic books because in a society of lawless hedonism, there are more recently published books and other forms of media that are completely pornographic and excessively violent, labeled as child or adolescent appropriate. I cannot accept arguments that some of the classics would have been considered the same at the time they were published because erosion of a system of morality also called grooming, is a slow, methodical process that has brought us to the state of affairs we are all forced to suffer in 2024. Make the argument for why this kind of content is necessary for entertainment purposes or otherwise. What kind of neighborhood and world do you want to live in? What kinds of relationships do you want to have and be part of? Does the content support that? If so, how? From that conversation, you can begin to sort accordingly. This is a response to a comment, what is considered age appropriate? Old enough to fully hold yourself accountable for any behavior that results from being exposed to the content and having the curiosity satisfied, then requiring little to no supervision to ensure any damage caused by those behaviors are corrected. If you're old enough to assess that accurately and understand the potential consequences, you have achieved a level of self-awareness around that subject matter that will protect you and everyone else. Otherwise, who teaches the alternatives and who is responsible for the outcomes? It's the evening of Wednesday, July the 31st, 2020. And I wanted to show you a news report that I just watched on NBC News Now. And um, I want to share it because it helps to make my point why we as parents cannot allow any aspect of this system in 2024 to dictate to us how to manage our own homes, how to raise our kids, how to care give our um, pets and our other vulnerable family members because they will take you on a roller coaster to nowhere with their unreasonable um, recommendations and expectations. This particular news report is on concerns administrators have about telephones in the schools. I am not going to get into the issue of kids with phones because the commercial market starts producing tablets for kids as young as age three. So we're not even going to get into the issue of what is the appropriate age for a child to have a phone. It doesn't have to be a phone. We're talking about the use of devices versus them being out in nature and being able to explore and discover within their own giftings. But my bigger issue is that it is a perfect example of how this system wants to take over control of our children, but have no idea how to raise them, teach them, or lead them. And when things do not, when they are not compliant, because they are kids who come from a home where they have have had that laid as a foundation for them, then they want to throw it back on the parent and make it the parents, not only the parents responsibility to fix the problem that they created, but they also want to blame the parent for the problem in the first place. So um, I'm going to show you this clip now and validate parents, especially mothers, because it's, it was just, I had to pause it because again, with the mom shaming, um, they can't continue to do this to you all. They've never been able to do it to me. They should no longer be able to do it to you. Moms, you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. 